Bit of a longer topic this one, forces and elasticity. So let's look at the objectives. You need to know what effect forces can have on objects. Describe the difference between elastic and inelastic deformation. Understand something called Hooke's law. Be able to recall and use the equation F equals KE, which is Hooke's law. Be able to use the equation elastic energy equals half KE squared, which calculates the elastic energy stored in a spring or any other stretched or compressed object. Okay, looking, if you want to pause this, you can have a look, but basically the spec tells you examples of forces, what they can do to things, and about elastic objects. And Hooke's law, a force and elasticity in an equation. And finally, we'll talk about the energy stored in a spring. Okay, let's look at the first one then. Know what effect force can have an object. This is the easy bit. Um, describe the differences between elastic and inelastic deformation. Okay, to change the shape of an object, you need to apply two forces. Here's some examples, bending, twisting, stretching. You can't do any of these unless you have two hands, you have two forces, or you attach one side of the object to one place and then pull or push with the other. Um, so you must always have two forces to change the shape of an object. When you stretch certain materials like rubber, um, and release it, it will return to its original shape and size. This is called elastic deformation. That's why rubber bands are often called elastic bands, because once stretched and released, they will return back to their size and shape. However, if you stretch some objects and release it, it no longer returns to its original shape. I don't know if people can remember Stretch Armstrong, the toy where you could stretch it out and it would stay stretched out. These are non-elastic, or inelastic is the correct word. It means, an inelastic deformation means once you've stretched it, it won't return back to its original position. Okay, moving on. A bit harder now. Hooke's Law. You can learn about Hooke's Law and the equation that goes with it. Many elastic materials obey Hooke's Law. Robert Hooke came up with a law that states that the extension of an object is directly proportional to the force applied, provided that the limit of proportionality is not exceeded. So what does that look like? If you wanted to watch the Fuse School video on springs, um, it's a good video. I've just taken a screenshot here so you can see how it works. So you see the spring on the left has no force on it, no uh, weight hanging it down. It is six centimeters long. Adding two newtons stretches it to eight, so it's gone up by two centimeters. And then at four newtons, gone up to 10, so it's stretched by 4, and so on. So every time you add a 2 newton mass on, it goes up by 2 centimetres, or every newton is 1 centimetre. This is a direct proportional relationship. It goes up in direct proportional. I'm now going to show you how you can do the required practical for Hooke's Law on my SharePoint page. So you can see in front of you here a method and the app. I'm going to open the app up and follow the instructions. So open the app up. I'm going to check all the boxes here so we can see the values and we can see the direction of the forces. Um, we're going to keep the spring constant at 200. Uh, make a table of force against displacement so you could do this and then adjust the force to get the following forces. Not 10, 20, etc. So if we click on here we can increase the force in one so we'll go up to 10 you can see that the extension is 0.05 meters. So remember 0.05. If I now go up to 20 newtons, it goes up to 0.1, which is double, double the force, double the extension. Go up to 30, and it will go up to 0.15. And hopefully you can see that that's going up in proportion. Um, if you wanted to do this, if you don't get the opportunity to do it for real physically in the lab, you could do it using this app. And then you could plot a graph, draw a line of best fit, and the line of best fit should be a straight line, which proves that the force, the extension, is directly proportional to the force applied. So when you've done the practical, or you've done it virtually using the app, you'll get a set of results. Here's an example. Um, and you can see that the first four points um, lie on a straight line going through the origin. That means that the extension is proportional to the weight. If you did keep stretching the spring, something strange happens. So I've, I've labeled in here the limit of proportionality where it no longer is straight. 
and it actually bends down. And this has gone past the limit of proportionality, so it no longer obeys Hooke's law. Be familiar with this graph, and I'm sure you could identify the point at which it will not return. So beyond that point, um, the spring will not will be inelastic and will not return back to its original position. Okay, you need to be able to recall and use the equation that goes with it. So force is equal to the spring constant times the extension. Um, and it's given these symbols here. You do need to recall this one. So rearranging it, you would get K is F over E. And also E is F divided by K for those higher level questions. So let's have a look at some examples. What force is needed to stretch a spring with a spring constant of 10 newton per meter by 2 meters? Well, you just use the equation, quite simple, this one, put the numbers into the equation, and you need a force of 20 newtons. Hopefully that makes sense. 10 newtons for every meter, so you need 20 newtons to stretch it 2 meters. Second example, if you have a force of 2 newton, it's applied to a spring of constant 10 newton per meter, how much will it extend? Rearranging the equation, extension F over K, 5 over 10, it would extend 0.5 meters. And example number three, if you have a force 20 newtons and it extends by 20 centimeters, what's the spring constant? A little bit tricky here, you must always convert the centimeters into meters. So 20 centimeters is 0.2 meters. And then you can put it into the equation and you get the spring constant of 100 newtons per meter. And finally, you need to be able to use the equation for the elastic energy stored. You don't have to recall this one. It will be given to you on the equation sheet in the exam. So let's look at some examples here. Here's a little toy gun where in the initial state you are compressing the spring and then you're going to release it and the ball will fire out. So to stretch and compress the spring, you must do work to it. This means you will increase the elastic energy store. And then when you, the diagram shows how the energy may then be transferred to other energy stores, in this case, kinetic energy when you fire the gun, spring expands and fires the gun out. So the elastic energy turns into kinetic energy. So let's look at how you can work out the elastic energy stored by using the equation. Here's the equation. Um, the symbols mean the E with the small e means elastic energy. You always use capital E for energy. Um, that's measured in joules. The K is a constant, the spring constant, which is newtons per meter. And the E is the extension, which you always put into meters. Rearranging it, if you want to do a higher level, you need to be able to rearrange it. Hopefully you can do that to get K is equal to E divided by one half of extension squared. And also this equation here. So here's an example. Calculate the energy stored in a spring with a spring constant 10 newtons per meter when it's stretched by 0.2 meters. So write down the equation. You've read it from the data sheet. And then put the numbers in. Remember, you're only squaring the extension. Um, and it should come out as 0.2 squared is 0.04 times 10, 0.4, and half of that is 0.2 joules. Second example, calculate the spring constant, much harder here. This would be a level eight question, I guess. Um, if you've got an energy of 100 joules, you stretch by 0.1 meter, calculate the spring constant. So you need to rearrange it to get the spring constant, put in the numbers, and you get an answer of 20,000 newtons per meter. That's quite a large number, so that's quite a stiff spring. You need a lot of force to extend it. The spring constant actually relates to the stiffness, so it's a high value and it's a very stiff or hard to stretch spring. Thank you for listening.